This is a lecture video for Math 283, and the topic today, actually we have, we have two topics for an upcoming class. One of those topics is normal and binomial vectors, and the other topic is velocity and acceleration. In this lecture video, I'm just going to cover normal and binomial vectors. I'll talk about what these vectors are, and then I'll do some example problems with these vectors. And then in class, we'll talk about the second part of the material, which is the velocity and acceleration. And we'll do some example problems there. So let's talk about the normal and binomial vectors. Well, let's imagine we have some space curve R of t in, a, in three space. And let's consider a point along that curve that corresponds to the parameter t. And I've drawn here uh, the unit tangent vector t of t. Okay, this is the vector. We've talked about this vector before. This is the vector that is uh, parallel to this curve, or tangent to this, this space curve, at the value of t there. And uh, it also has a magnitude of 1. Now, if you think about it, uh, today we're going to look for vectors that are perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. If you think about this, there's actually an infinite number of vectors that are perpendicular to this vector. And that forms a plane, a plane that's perpendicular to this vector at this point here. Um, today we're going to find specifically two of those of those infinite number of vectors, the normal and the binormal vector. The first thing I want to observe is if we take a derivative of the unit tangent vector t prime of t, okay, this is orthogonal or uh, perpendicular to the, the uh, unit tangent vector. Okay. Now there's a, a proof of this in the book on page 858, 859 in example 4. Um, I'm not going to going to do this proof. It's a pretty simple proof, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to get into it. Um, but basically, the, the derivative of the unit tangent vector is perpendicular to the tangent vector. So if I were to draw this vector on here, it might look, I don't know exactly which way it's going to point, um, you know, because it's, it's in a plane perpendicular to the, the space curve. Uh, but actually, but it looks, we could imagine it looks something like this. This is t prime of t, it's perpendicular to to the uh, the tangent vector. And actually, I do know that, that t prime of t will point uh, in a, in the direction in which the curve is bending. So t prime of t points in the direction in which the curve is bending. So it might look something like that. And this is leading us to defining something called the unit normal vector. Okay, unit normal vector. This is designated with the symbol n of t, okay? And this is defined to be the uh, derivative of the unit tangent vector, so t prime of t, okay? Divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. This is the unit normal vector. It's perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. It has a magnitude of 1, and this is how we calculate it. And uh, as I mentioned before, this n of t points in a direction in which the curve is bending. Okay. Now there's another perpendicular vector we're interested in, that's called the binormal vector. And this vector, b of t, is denoted with d of t. This is equal to the cross product of the unit tangent vector, t of t, crossed with the unit normal vector, n of t. Okay, that's the binormal vector. This is also perpendicular to, uh, to our curve, it's perpendicular to t of t, but it's, it's perpendicular to n of t as well. So t of t, n of t, and b of t make up a set of three uh, mutually orthogonal vectors that follow this curve around. So as, as a particle is moving along this curve, this set of mutually orthogonal vectors follows this, this curve around. And this is called, this is sometimes referred to as the t n b frame. It's a frame of reference that moves along with the curve. Um, the vectors, the vectors uh, n of t and b of t define what's called uh, the normal plane. So, so n and b, n and b define the normal plane. Okay, this is a plane that's perpendicular to our space curve at any given point. Um, and then there's also another plane called the osculating plane. 
and this plane is defined by the vectors uh, a and t. And this defines a, a plane that uh, most that most contains the curve at a particular point. If that makes any sense to you, o uh, uh, osculating comes from the word kiss in Latin. So this this is a plane that comes closest to containing the curve at this particular point. We're not going to do much more with os osculating planes or normal planes, but realize that this, these three vectors create various planes that are either perpendicular to our space curve or that, that kind of kiss the space curve or most include the space curve. And we could try to find the equations of these planes given the space curve. I don't think, in the interest of time, we're not going to go off in that path in this class, but you should be aware of it. What I do want to do with you, though, is do an example problem um, where we find uh, the, the unit normal and the binormal vectors for a given space curve. So let's do that, ex let's do that example problem together. Okay, let's imagine we have a space curve. Uh, this is our example problem. Let's imagine we have a space curve, R of t, that's given by this equation, cosine of t i hat plus sine of t j hat plus p k hat. Okay, what is this? Well, this is one we've seen a lot. This is our, our, this is our standard helix. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to find the um, unit normal and binormal vectors. To do this, we first need to find the uh, tangent vector, the unit tangent vector. And to do that, we need to take some derivatives. So we first need to take a derivative of r of t. We'll take r prime of t. This comes out to minus sine of t i hat plus cosine of t j hat plus k hat. Okay, that's r prime of t. I'm also going to find the magnitude of r prime of t. So the magnitude will be of r prime of t will be equal to the square root of sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t plus 1. Okay, well this right here is our is just 1 by the Pythagorean identity. So we have 1 plus 1, and this equals the square root of 2. And now we can get our tangent vector. So t of t is equal to r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. Okay, so this is going to equal 1 over square root of 2 times r prime of t times minus sine of t i hat plus cosine of t j hat plus k hat. Okay, that's our tangent vector. All right, that's good. Uh, now we, we want to try to find the, the normal vector. And to do that, that involves derivatives of the unit tangent vector. So we're going to take find t prime of t. OK, if, uh, if we do that, we get 1 over square root of 2 times minus cosine of t i hat minus sine of t j hat. Uh, and we take the derivative here, we actually get 0. So this is what we get for our for t prime of t. Okay. Now we want to find the magnitude of t prime of t. By the way, the magnitude of t is always one, but the magnitude of t prime of t will not necessarily be one. So we'll find the magnitude of t prime of t. Okay, and that's going to equal the square root. If we square the one over square root of two, we get one half. We get cosine squared of t plus sine square root of t, okay? This is 1, so now we're left with uh, 1 over the square root of 2 is the magnitude of t prime of t, okay? Now the unit normal vector n of t is equal to t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. Okay, so here we're going to get this divided by this. As you can see, obviously the square roots are going to cancel out. So these cancel out, and we're left with minus cosine of t i hat minus sine of t j hat. So this is now our unit normal vector. This is a vector that's perpendicular to the unit tangent vector at any point. And uh, if we look at this, we want to note this is actually horizontal. This vector points horizontally. So for our helix, if you remember our helix, something like this, it spirals around, not quite like that, but you get the idea. 
this, if this is our tangent vector t of t, the unit normal vector is horizontal and it points towards the z-axis. So this is n of t right here. Points that way, where tangent vector t of t points that way. Okay, as a final part of this problem, let's find the binormal vector. Okay, where's this here? The binormal vector is equal to, uh, oh, I'm not sure I wrote a, a formula. Did I write a formula for the binormal vector in the, in the theory part? I'm not sure I did. Ha! <laughs> okay, I forgot to mention, uh, what is the binormal vector? How do we calculate it? It's actually equal to the tangent vector t of t crossed with the normal vector n of t. So to calculate the binormal vector, we take the cross product of the, uh, of the tangent vector with the normal vector. Unit, nor unit tangent vector crossed with the unit normal vector. This is a vector that's also perpendicular to, uh, to these two vectors. And by the way, the, the, the magnitude of the binormal vector is one because the magnitudes of these are one. So this magnitude is one. Let's find the binormal vector. Yeah, I'm not sure I, I apologize if I didn't mention this equation in the, in the theoretical section there. Um, so to calculate this, we're going to set up our determinant here, and we found t prime of t, right? So um, we're going to get, this will be equal to, I'm going to pull the 1 over square root of 2 outside. So we get 1 over square root of 2, and then we get i, j, k. And then we have our t here, which is minus sine of t. This is cosine of t, and this is 1. And then we plug in our uh, normal vector, which is minus cosine of t, minus sine of t, and the, the, the z component is 0. So we want to find the determinant here. And let's do this together. So it's going to be 1 over square root of 2 um, times the determinant of, uh, actually I'll leave off the parentheses, times the determinant of cosine of t 1 minus sine of t 0 times i hat minus 1 over square root of 2 times minus sine of t 1 minus cosine of t 0 j hat uh, plus 1 over square root of 2 times the determinant of minus sine of t cosine of t minus cosine of t minus sine of t k hat. So this is the cross product here. Let's simplify this. We get 1 over square root of 2 um, times, uh, let's put this all together here. So here, if we multiply across, we get 0 minus sine of t. So we get minus minus sine of t i hat. If we go over here, we get 0 here minus negative cosine. That gives us a positive cosine, but then we have another negative sine tacked on. So we get a minus cosine of t. Make sure I'm doing this correctly, j hat. And then finally, uh, we're going to take the cross product here. So now we get, uh, we get a minus and a minus gives us a plus. So we get plus sine squared of t minus a minus cosine squared of t, so that's cosine squared of t, k hat. So this is our cross product. Now this, by the Pythagorean identity, is 1. So the binomial vector b of t is simply equal to 1 over square root of 2 times minus sine of t i hat minus cosine of t j hat um, plus k hat. Okay, that's our binormal vector. And keep in mind, this vector now is perpendicular to both the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector. Okay, so that's a good example problem with finding the normal and binormal vectors. Um, in class, we will talk about velocity and acceleration and do some practice problems on those topics.